there you go, come through. Um, and then I was going to print the back half of this and I thought, well, hang on a minute, I better check, make sure it actually does what it says on the box. So I tried it out. And unfortunately, what's the word I'm looking for? It's cr G'day, what's the worst thing that could happen in this hobby? What, what, what would be the death knell of our hobby of flying model aircraft and drones? I think it would be if the predictions of all the doomsayers came true and a drone crashed into a manned aircraft and people died or got injured, severely injured. We don't want that. That's, that's the worst case scenario. That would give the regulators the excuses they need to completely clear us out of the airspace. We don't want that happening. And, and to be fair, nobody I know in the hobby would want that happening at all. And everyone works very hard to avoid that. And for my part, I've developed the ADSB alarm. Files will be online on my own server here very shortly. Um, but we need more than just a simple thing like the ADSB alarm. What we need is, if we look to aviation, there's a thing called the Swiss cheese model. And it, it works on the basis that you don't just want a layer of safety. You want as many layers of safety as you can get because sometimes things don't work. And so in the case of keeping an eye out for manned aircraft, we've got our first line of defense, eyes and ears. They work pretty well most of the time, but they're not infallible. I, I, we've nearly been caught out. Things like gliders can come from nowhere. You don't hear them. They're silent. Whoosh, there they are. And if you're operating in an area, we were flying in a, in a forested area, a wooded area, flying in a little clearing with our mini quads back in the day when they were called mini quads. And we were flying around and there was a clearing above our heads. And out of nowhere came a Robinson R-22 helicopter. Just suddenly there was nothing, and then suddenly there was a helicopter, and then nothing. It just flew over. Because the, the, the trees were quite dense, we didn't hear it coming. And it was flying very low, probably only 15, 20 feet above the tree canopy. Now, if we'd been popping up just as it came along, boom, bad things could have happened. Now, we were flying totally legally. We had people spotting. We were well away from airports. We were just doing everything right. But the fact that sometimes manned aviation doesn't follow by the rules means we've got to take the extra step, extra care, because if, if, for example, someone had popped up above the tree canopy and that helicopter had flown into them, we would have been responsible. Even though the manned helicopter was breaking rules, ultimately the regulators say unmanned aircraft must always give way to manned aircraft. So if you hit a manned aircraft, doesn't matter what he's doing, you are in the wrong. So we're going to take care, make sure we don't do that. So we need these multiple layers, as I say, first layer, eyes and ears. They work pretty good most of the time. Second layer is something like ADS-B alarm. Aircraft that are fitted with ADS-B uh, transmitters, we can pick them up from quite a few miles away and, and we can see where they're going and how high they are. And we can automatically be alerted to the fact that this is coming our way. It may be a threat to the safety of our operations. That's fine. But Sometimes we operate in Class G airspace and not all manned aircraft have ADS-B alarms, so we can't rely on ADS-B either. Can't rely on your eyes and ears, can't rely on ADS-B. We need as many layers. The next layer is radio. Now, although it is legal to operate in unmanned in Class G airspace without a radio, most even most paramotor operators have a radio. So this is the last line of defense, I believe. And, and, and it also, it's one of the cheapest ways of doing it. Now, this is a very cheap scanner I bought off eBay 15 years ago, perhaps. Um, 35 bucks I paid for that. And so that's one option. If you want to have a radio to listen out for manned aircraft, because they call up from time to time when they're flying around in Class G, um, this is a cheap option. Cheap and simple. Go onto eBay, see if you can find one that does aviation band, buy it. Problem solved, stick it on your belt. Probably have to change the batteries if it's as old as this one. Um, but that's not an option for everybody. Sometimes you just can't, they just don't appear on eBay. And you could buy a new scanner, but they're not cheap. And some of them are pretty damn expensive, especially the ones that cover the aviation band. And so I thought, well, what are the other options? Surely there must be some other cheap options. And I thought, well, so this is an opportunity, a learning opportunity and a project opportunity. So I went online and looked for kit sets, kit sets that would enable us to build our own Avband radio receiver. Um, electronics is becoming actually surprisingly simple these days. There's far fewer parts involved in such devices as used to be. And so I went looking and I found AliExpress. I found this. This is one part. You can build a, <laughs> build your own receiver with one part, this DSP radio module that does AM broadcast, FM broadcast, and airband. So, hey, not cheap. I don't think it's cheap for what it is, but I thought I will order it, and if it works, fantastic. So I ordered it, and here it is. 
it arrived. I'll take it down to the little case I made for it first so you can see. There it is. That's the module. See that? It's got a little frequency display, it's got some buttons, it's got a little knob. And on the back, the thing that really appealed to me about this is no soldering required. It's got a connector for the speaker, a connector for the power, and oh, okay, you have to solder a wire on for the antenna. But that makes it as simple as you can get it. Power source can be a single 18650 lithium ion battery because it'll run on 3.3 to 5 volts. So that battery doesn't even need a regulator. You just wire the battery straight onto there. Piece of cake, fantastic. And as I say, airband. Woohoo! What could possibly be wrong with that? So I went ahead and printed up a 3D, a little 3D front panel for it so that it would be a bit more sophisticated than what you see there. There we go. I put the. Um, little 3D case and it's got you know the knobs and little buttons come through, little clicky buttons, there you go, come through. Um, and then I was going to print the back half of this and I thought well hang on a minute I better check make sure it actually does what it says on the box. So I tried it out and unfortunately what's the word I'm looking for? It's crap. This is utter 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 crap. This thing just does not work as advertised. It receives FM signals. Fine. It receives broadcast AM signals, fine, but when it comes to the aviation band, it is useless. It is insensitive. It doesn't have enough sensitivity to receive signals until the aircraft would be basically on top of you. It's not sensitive enough. Also, it has what we call bleed through. It actually, the FM radio stations actually punch through onto the onto the aviation band frequencies because it has such a poor, poorly selective front end. It is a DSP radio and the front end gets overloaded by strong FM signals from local broadcast channels. So it just it's not worth the money. Do not waste your money on this. Not cheap and not worth a cent of the money that you would pay for it. So I have hopefully saved you if you're thinking of something similar. Don't. It's it's I don't know. Well, I'll, that will just have to sit in my parts box. Which is a big shame, as I say, because it would be so simple to make that into a really useful little um, pocketable F band radio receiver. So then I looked around, what other options are there? Are there other kit sets? And yeah, there's a, quite a range of kit sets, but not many of them met the criteria. Now, some of these kit sets are very simple and that you tune them with a knob. But that makes it impossible to know what frequency you're on, what channel, because in certain areas, every area has its local operating frequency, especially in Class G airspace. And around here, it's uh, one. 23.25 megahertz. Um, so you have to set your radio to that frequency exactly to pick up the signals. And with a digital display, of course, that's easy. You can see exactly what the frequency is. But when you get these cheap, cheap kits with just a knob, you've got no idea what the frequency is. So you, and some of these little, there's little radios, like little transistor radios that have a little tuning dial as well. Again, they're not accurate enough to use for the purposes that we want to use. If you just want to tune around and find radio aircraft transmitting, that's fine. But if you want to be listening on a specific frequency, not very good, no good at all. Also, we need a squelch. And a squelch is basically, what happens with squelch is when there's no transmission, there's no noise out of the radio. It only actually makes a noise when someone's talking on the radio. This is supposed to have squelch, but it doesn't. <laughs> it's useless. So again, that failed in that regard. Um, so I looked around and there are a few radio kit sets with the designator R, there's R20, R40, R60, R80, I think, on AliExpress. The only one that really merited consideration was the R80. That's the top line one. Again, it's, it's not as cheap as it should be for what it is. And I bought the R80 kit. I've started assembling it. If it does the job, then I'll let you know and we'll do a little build video and you can build it along with me if you want to, if that's what you'd like to do. It, it, unfortunately, the price means it may actually cost more than picking up a cheap second-hand scanner. But if you're looking for a project, it's an ideal thing to learn a bit about electronics, practice your soldering, and in the end, have a useful device that you can add an extra layer to your Swiss G safety model when you're flying drones and model aircraft. So let me know about that. I'll also, if the R80 works, I'll also design and um, a 3D case for it with built-in battery so you can charge it through the USB-C and that sort of stuff. So make it a really useful, an actual a tool, a device you can use rather than just a bodge of wires. And we'll see how we go. If that doesn't work, then I don't know what we do. Um, I may look at, at some stage in the future, designing my own little low component count F-band radio with squelch and digital tuning. Tick all the boxes, something you can just slip on your belt. 
Um, I'd rather not do that, but if I have to, I may do that. Uh, first of all, I've got to get the ADSB files on the new server that's going in here. I've got my, I don't know if I mentioned, but I've got a, another port being activated on my fiber modem. So a dedicated computer here acting solely as a server for my video files and my project files. So I won't have to worry about ISP hosting, about YouTube spitting the dummy and getting upset because it's misinterpreted a word I've used as being something that's offensive or not allowed. Um, or it won't start demonetizing videos because someone's incorrectly filed a content ID claim against music that I've paid to license. All those things that are just driving me crazy with YouTube. Skip that. I'm going to host stuff on my own server. I'll still host on YouTube. So you can either watch the videos on YouTube or you can watch them on my server without the ads and without all the hassles. Um, up to you. Let me know what you think about that. Um, are you keen to see stuff hosted on my own server rather than on YouTube? And I'll try and make sure there's, a, there's an app as well to go with that if you're a mobile phone user. Um, yeah, and how keen are you on a project like the Avband receiver? Or you, do you already have an Avband receiver? Do you have one, one of these scanners or whatever? Do you use it? Has it saved your bacon? Are, are you, do you think it's important that we have this extra layer of safety when we go out and fly because manned aircraft can't be trusted to play by the rules? You tell me. I'd like to know. My experiences are that, yeah, we definitely need as much protection as we can get when we're flying our models, our drones and RC models. And we need to demonstrate to regulators that we're taking the initiative. We're not just waiting for them to come up with even more restrictions and regulations and rules. We are taking the initiative. There's no legal requirement for you to have one of these when you go flying. But if you have one, you're going to be safer. And it's pretty hard for regulators to say, oh, you just, these people are just clueless criminal or whatever. You know, they're just bad actors. If we're out there going over and above what, what the regulators believe is necessary. How do you then claim that we are untrustworthy and need to be further regulated? We have got to play smart in this game, and I think this is one way to do it. There you go. That's it from me for another video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. You have enabled me to waste money on this so nobody else has to. <laughs> and I appreciate that. So, and also, it means that no mid-roll ads. No mid-roll ads in these videos. Woo! And no sponsors. None of that crap. Just content. There you go. Thanks for watching, guys. Spot you later.